Welcome to another edition of Green is Good, and we're so honored to have with us today Rodney North. He is the answer man, and he's going to be talking to us about EqualExchange.coop and everything he's doing about at Equal Exchange and the fair trade industry. Welcome to Green is Good, Rodney. Uh, thank you very much for having me on. Hey, you know, I, you know, I made a little joke at the top. The answer, man, you're really a worker, and you own um, the Equal Exchange, and uh, we're going to be talking about fair trade today. But before we get into all those important topics, Rodney, talk, share with our listeners a little bit about the Rodney North journey leading up to Equal Exchange and your and your life in the fair trade industry. Uh, sure. So I should make clear that I'm one of the owners, one of 120 <laughs> owners here, all the employees. Beauty of a co-op. Yeah. And the company was already 10 years old uh, when I joined, uh, which was back in 96. And gotcha. What led, and I probably like a lot of people in this field, I had never had any expectation of going into business. Um, I thought I'd work for the government or uh, a nonprofit uh, maybe like a UNICEF or Save the Children or something like that. I was really interested in, you know, how to make the world a better place, especially where life is hardest. So in the global mm. south and poor countries. And so it was in the early uh, 90s. I'd, uh, I, was, I was, quote, a mature student. I'd gone back to school to get my BA, and I was <laughs> studying about international economic development. And there was this constant refrain from my professors and from my colleagues and, and from the sources that I was reading about, like, business is bad. Business is bad. They're destroying the environment. They're exploding people. And unfortunately, government is largely powerless to do anything about it. All we can do is kind of like clean up the mess that's left behind. And, and it occurred to me, and I learned later that it occurred to, to, occur to other people, that, well, if we don't like what we see happening in the business world, mm. shouldn't we get involved and try to do it a different, better, more fair, more sustainable way? And, you know, that this was a real uh, sort, of change, sort of shift in my perspective. And I think over time, a lot of people have been having this shift where, you know, you can both have this, quote, other orientation. You could be interested in helping society or, you know, your neighborhood or, or the world, the ecology, and do it through the form of business. Um, so, again, for me, this was the mid-90s. I graduated with my degree in economic development, but then I tried to find, you know, are, are there companies out there who are in the marketplace but trying to pioneer a new, more sustainable, more fair model that's when I stumbled across Equal Exchange. It was, it was really by chance. And um, uh, at the time, they were only 10 years old, a small company with a 12 employees. And uh, I got my foot in the door as a, as a temp, just answering the <laughs> phones and sorting the mail. But I was excited about what they were doing. And, and it's interesting. I think it's true for a lot of, say, people coming out of college and certainly true for them today that when you pick an organization to join, you're kind of rolling the dice, you know, that yep. organization, it may not pan out. It, it may, you know, fizzle, uh, but it's all worked. I've now been here 20 years. We've wow. gone from a $3 million company to a $60 million business from 12 people to 150. And I, I just feel very lucky to have stumbled across Equal Exchange uh, when I did. And for our listeners out there to learn more about Equal Exchange, please go to www.equalexchange.coop, C-O-O-P, dot C-O-O-P. You know, Rodney, we're going to be talking about fair trade today, which is such an important topic that we've never covered in our seven years here. Hundreds of shows of, of Green is Good. We've never talked about fair trade. So this is sort of everything you wanted to know about fair trade but was afraid to ask. We're going to be talking about that, but talk to us a little bit about equal exchange. How does it work, and um, you know, and 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 how many people are there now? You said you're doing sixty plus million dollars. Explain a little bit about your mission there, and then we'll get into all the great topics about fair trade uh, and and the great products that you're creating. Sure. So uh, we have the name Equal Exchange because that's the ethos behind what we're doing. Mm. Uh, we are a, an importer 
and a wholesaler of mm. organic fair trade products, coffee, tea, cocoa, bananas, cashews, wow. olive oil, about 200 things all together. And uh, all of them are fairly traded. Almost all of them are certified organic. All are coming from uh, small scale farmers, uh, and except for say some almonds from California and some, some uh, peppermint uh, in Washington state. All the rest of it is coming from the global south. And uh, oh, and we're a coffee roaster. Yeah, uh, that's a, the big huh. part of our business. So, so we're not just an importer and wholesaler, but also a food processor. Uh, we're a for-profit, employee-owned, employee-controlled business. Mm. Very uh, rare thing. Um, some people think we're a nonprofit because we are so committed to trying to make farming work for farmers and to make trade work mm. for these same farmers. Yeah. Um, but also we want the business to work for ourselves, we, the employee owners. And just to demonstrate that you know, it doesn't have to be dog-eat-dog. Um, it doesn't have to be all about you know, maximizing the bottom line, uh, but that you can you know, really run a business like with a heart based on the golden rule um, to sort of spread the benefits of commerce more equitably you know, from the farmers in Peru to the people in the, in the warehouse, including our, um, uh, the management and, and the people who have financed us. Uh, you know, no one's going to get rich uh, here, not the investors, not the founders, not the employees, unfortunately not the farmers, but they're going to be better off. Um, right. And we're yeah, trying to make something that works for everybody. So, you ha so under the term fair trade, you have all these wonderful products, and I say fair trade in like quotes, mm -hmm. and you, as all the products you just mentioned, the bananas and the tea and the chocolate and the cocoa and the coffee and the, and is this list constantly, excuse me, growing, or is it a limited list for a reason? And how do you continue to expand what you're doing? Obviously, when you came on, it was much smaller 20 years ago. Now you're at 60. Is that going to keep growing? And are more and more Generation Z and millennials out there really craving and searching for these fair trade products? Sure. So uh, probably like a lot of the people you've had on the show, you yeah. know, we got into this long before it was cool, long before right. the market yet, you know. Often, if you really care about something, you have to go create the market, get yeah. you know, educate people, and then when they learn, like, oh, oh, this is the story behind where my bananas come from. This is how coffee is normally traded. Gee, I don't feel so good about that. Is there a choice? And then mm -hmm. we try to give them a choice. Like, here is an option you can feel good about. Here are the farmers that we work with, and we work with the same farmers year after year. And uh, so when you're... In those early years, sure, you, you kind of try to find something that works. We tried all kinds of things, banana mm. chips and tuna from Cape Verde, but it was <laughs> coffee that caught on. You know, this is uh. specialty coffee was beginning to catch on with Pete's and Starbucks. So coffee right. is what stuck, what worked. We focused on that. And, you know, as, as is the case for many entrepreneurs, kind of like, okay, this is working. And then sort of take the success of your, your successful product and then, you know, make some investments, you know, uh, laterally. It's like, okay, can we apply this to tea? Uh, that actually took a couple tries before that began to click. All right, can we now go into hot cocoa? That worked. Okay, now from that base, can we then expand into chocolate and more value-added process uh, products? So, uh, thankfully, as the years have gone by, we've been able to add products much more rapidly. You know, it used to be it'd be years in between new product introductions, and now it might be months. And so, and, like just in the last few years, we've added a whole line of uh, organic uh, fruit and nuts, dried uh, fruit and nuts, um, re helping us to reach all new communities of farmers around the world. And and just so we understand, Equal Exchange's role between us as the consumers and the great farmers around the world that are that are growing these products is the fa a facilitator and a certifier of of the of, of these products. How does that work, and what is exactly Equal Exchange's role there? Yeah. So uh, again, we're a whole, uh, an importer, yeah, uh, processor, right? Because we roast, yeah, 
see about you know seven million pounds a year. Wow. Uh, whole, yeah, we wholesale it. We also do some retailing directly to the consumer, to small offices and and whatnot. Uh, so it's everything, huh? Uh, but we're we're not a certifier. Uh, that was something that the founders considered doing. It's like, okay, how can ah. the market? Obviously, certification is a big way to change industries. You look at recycled paper or um, certified organic foods. Mm. Uh, and they, said, they decided, no, we're going to be like a doer, not a certifier. Got it. We're going to pioneer this model. And we, one of the things that was different was that we always wanted to show others, like, hey, you can do this too. You know, mm. sure, the, the, the norm is to like buy low, sell high, um, uh, and if that farmer gets a low price, well, that's his problem. And we wanted to show like, no, 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 actually, it can work for everybody. You can pay these higher prices. And, and by the way, there are all these business benefits to doing, uh, to doing the right thing. Uh, greater loyalty from your suppliers. Our farmers have more means to invest in quality, to invest in sustainability. So, so we're a business. We're trying to uh, we want other people to adopt our practices. And mm-hmm. for a long time, it's like, no, you're just a crazy little company that's going to go out of business because you can't, like, pay these fair prices when the rest of us are paying those prices. Right. I like to Got think that's last laugh. You know, now hundreds of companies are at least buying and selling a little bit of fair trade coffee or bananas or tea. And, and that's a start. We want, you know, to... Like, like, like all of us are trying to do across the green industries, we want our peers to keep taking those steps and in this case, like to make their supply chains not only greener, but more fair. And, and we're trying to show that. Got you- it. Got it. And you know, for our listeners who just joined us, we've got Rodney North. He's one of the owners and, of course, one of the workers at Equal Exchange. And you can find them at www.equalexchange.coop. You know, Rodney, talk a little bit about you know co-op, that word there. What is a co-op and why is that so important to the Equal Exchange process and the fair trade label? Yeah, so it's interesting. Some of this stuff is, is new. Um, like your work with electronic recycling is relatively new in the, in the big history of things. Right. Uh, we think cooperatives are actually like one of the original socially responsible business models. Uh, mm. Co-ops go back over 150 years, and in fact, they're all around us. So a really? cooperative is a business that's owned by the people who use the business. And this can take all different kinds of forms, and it can be for-profit or non-profit. So when you think of a credit union, that's a bank, but it's not owned by Wall Street or investors. It's owned by the depositors, you know, the people who walk in the door and deposit their paycheck and, you know, um, who use the ATM. They're the owners. Uh, We're a worker cooperative, so we, the people who show up here at the office, at the headquarters, we own the business and we all own it evenly, you know, one person, one share of stock. Um, Farmer co-ops are... uh, are bigger in the American economy. So think of Ocean Spray, Welch's, uh, Lando Lakes, Organic Valley, uh, Sunkist. Those are all food businesses owned by the farmers, so not, not owned by, uh, by Wall Street. Um, and the list goes on. A true Value, Ace Hardware. Those are stores owned, it's a, it's a brand owned by mom and pop uh, store owners across the nation. So we uh, were a cooperative, and we only source from co-ops of small-scale farmers uh, mm. around the world, about 70 of them. And one reason we're so focused on that is in our 30 years of work, we've really seen how uh, agriculture in tropical countries is really dominated by the 1%, you know, to use Occupy Wall Street terminology, you know, the big, <laughs> the big foreign companies. Um, <laughs> And it's the, the little guy and, and the little, you know, woman farmer who are taking it on the chin. They never can get out of their mm. um, The markets are dominated by these big players. So if we can be a friendly buyer, you know, coming down from the United States and work directly with, you know, like 100 farmers in Mexico or Guatemala or Uganda, and they, by working with us, they can begin to start their own little businesses collecting, warehousing, processing, whatever it is, you know, pineapples or, or, or sugar or, or coffee, and then exporting that directly to us, 
on fair trade terms and working with us year after year. It's not mm. like, you know, we talk about the market being like a series of one night stands. <laughs> and that's not really a recipe for sustainability. Right. We work with the same farmers. It's more like a marriage. And we work with the same farmers for decades. Rodney, we're down to about five minutes or so. You know, we're all inundated with all these labels out there when you walk through the, the aisles of all these great stores now that sell these new products or, you know, or revisited products that now say they're organic or MSC certified or gluten free, fair trade also. Why is fair trade the seal of fair trade now more worthy than ever? And there are different fair trade seals out there, at least four. How do we find yours or are they all the same or how do we differentiate them at least? Sure. Uh, well, quickly, I, I think one thing to get excited about, about a fair yeah. trade product and something with a fair trade certification seal, is yeah. that most of the certifications are about uh, the stuff, like the material history mm. of the product. You know, no chemicals were used, or it has recycled content, et cetera. So fair trade uh, is essentially the certification, for now at least, that's looking at the human story behind the product. Now, almost all fair trade products are also organic, oh. so they're green. But in this case, like, okay, but what about the, like the terms of trade for, the, for that small farmer who grew that product or that ingredient? And fair trade is telling you that like, you know, something was done to you know, level the playing field, to, to move more of your consumer dollar to that farmer to give them a chance. Um, so there's that. Regarding all the different certifications, uh, three that we uh, feel pretty good about are there's a brand new one that's actually controlled by farmers, and this is a, a rare thing. It's called SPP. Uh, it's, a, it's a Spanish acronym, but you just need to know SPP. We're beginning to use that on our coffee. Also, there's Fairtrade America, and there's one called um, IMO, uh, but on the boxes it'll look like Fair for Life. It's an orange seal. So those are three to look for. Um, gotcha. Yeah, and we encourage people to do that. Gotcha. And can they learn more about this at equalexchange.coop? They can. Just Google Equal Exchange and Fair Trade. Also, the Fair World Project, fairworldproject.org, okay. is a great source uh, for information about that. You know, in, in, some, in some other interviews, you've called fair trade a gateway product. Can you explain to our listeners in the last couple of minutes we have, what does that mean to you and why should our listeners uh, be so interested in that terminology? Sure. Well, so, you know, people talk about, joke about uh, marijuana as the gateway drug. <laughs> fear being that's going to lead to heavier stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Into drugs. Um, and in this case, it's like, you know, fair trade product can be the, the thing that introduces you to that human story behind the product. You know, like we always have farmers, like photographs and stories on our packaging. And you begin to think about, oh, oh you know, well, this is cool. And I had never stopped to think about, you know, where my chocolate <laughs> bar came from and who grew the sugar that went into it. And then you begin to think, oh, well, what about everything else that's in my grocery cart? Well, what about, you know, the shirt that I'm wearing? You know, who... Who, who stitched it and you know, who grew the cotton and what, what was their life like and, and is there a, like an ethical choice that I could seek out? So it gets, gets people thinking about like the people story behind our products and, and what are the uh, exciting options that may be out there. Gotcha. You know, Rodney, in the last minute or so, any last thoughts? What's the future? You know, you've been doing this 20 years. What's the future of the Equal Exchange? And where do you want to, uh, and you and your partners want to take this? Uh, well, since the food industry is about a trillion dollar business, <laughs> we have a, a long way to go. Um, yeah. So if we just kept at the same rate, you know, maybe half the food in the country would be fairly traded in a century. So in fact, if anything, we need to pick up the pace and just keep bringing the model to more farmers, to more parts of the grocery store, because the sky is the limit. Hey, the sky is the limit with fair trade and with equal exchange. You can learn more about all the great work Rodney and his partners are doing at equalexchange.coop, www.equalexchange.coop. Thank you, Rodney, for being a fair trade ambassador and superstar. You are truly living proof that green is good.